Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Vipin. I work as a staff engineer in VMware. In OpenStack, I contribute to Cinder and OS Profiler. So this talk is about uh, OS Profiler. It's a library in Oslo. Um, it's meant for profiling OpenStack API requests. So here's the agenda. So we first discuss some use cases uh, uh, that's applicable for OS Profiler, and followed by an overview on OS Profiler. And uh, then we discuss some internals of OS Profiler. So if you're planning to contribute to OS Profiler or you're planning to implement, um, integrate OS Profiler into your project, then that would be useful. And uh, finally, we uh, show a small demo which uh, describes some of the things we discussed. So uh, let's start with the use cases. So I hope uh, you can see the image clearly. So. <laughs> um, Actually, this is a part of a call graph uh, generated for a command. Um, um, the command is Nova boot from uh, boot an instance from block device with an image source. So uh, this request it uh, uh, actually contains um, it, it propagates to Nova, Cinder, Glance, and Neutron. So this call graph contains method uh, from Nova, Cinder, Glance, and Neutron. So let's take a close look at that call graph. Okay, it didn't work. Okay, so you can see the call graph. Okay, so so this is a call graph generated for that uh, uh, command, uh, Nova boot from um, a, boot an instance of block device. So, uh, so it's, it's pretty huge. So uh, at the point not is this doesn't contain all the methods. This only contains the API calls, RPC calls, driver, and uh, the manager public methods. So a lot of methods are not in this call graph. So we can um, imagine how big is a call graph, the actual call graph will be. So uh, as if that we have a performance issue in one of these commands, so how do we troubleshoot it? Uh, the performance issue may be in, um, we, we don't know which service it will be, because a lot of services are involved. And uh, these services are running in multiple hosts, so we, we don't know where, uh, where, where to start. So the problem may be in a single method. So it's often the case that uh, some methods doesn't scale well. So, and that may be the reason why uh, we have performance issue. So identifying the performance bottleneck is a first step uh, in, in diagnosing these kind of performance issues. And in some cases, we need to benchmark uh, two drivers, for example, uh, LVM and NSF for Cinder, and uh, using a tool such as Rally. And, uh, and uh, oftentimes, you wonder, OK, why delete is not? It, it's taking a lot of time in LVM compared to Ceph. So we want to understand how, uh, why it's taking more time. So we can use, um, uh, so that is another use case where we would like to understand the performance issues with certain APIs. <laughs> So uh, what, what's the solution for this? The solution is distributed tracing. So what is distributed tracing? So distributed tracing basically helps you understand uh, how a request uh, flows through the distributed system. So it also gathers the timing information, how much time is spent in each uh, method. So, um, so uh, an OS profiler is actually the distributed uh, tracing tool for OpenStack. Okay, so uh, how do we use OS Profiler uh, to, uh, for, for, the, for troubleshooting these kind of issues? So how to generate uh, a distributed trace using OS Profiler? So it's, it's really simple. You, we just need to use a profile option with the command. For example, for creating um, Cinder volume, we can specify um, profile and provide a secret key. So the secret key is something configured by the admin just to make sure that only certain users can uh, enable the distributed tracing. So uh, when you run this Cinder command, um, it uh, actually prints uh, an ID for your distributor trace, which you can later use to generate a report. So similarly for Nova, we can specify the same option, profile uh, with a secret key. 
So uh, once uh, we generate the trace, so to view the trace, we can use a command from OIS profiler. Uh, it's a OIS profiler trace show command. Um, and uh, we have to give the trace ID printed um, when we use the profile option. So let's take a look at the sample report generated from OIS profiler. Okay. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know the reason why it's not working. <laughs> so um, anyway, we will cover this again in the demo. So the, the sample report. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So um, a brief overview on OS Profiler. So as I mentioned, it's a distributed tracing tool for uh, OpenStack, and it generates a single trace for an API request. So the trace basically consists of multiple trace elements. A trace element um, is, is a, corresponds to a method um, invoked uh, during the API request. And uh, uh, using OS Profiler, we can generate the trace report in different formats, such as HTML, uh, JSON, and DOT. So DOT is a language used to draw graphs. So um, OS Profiler prints, uh, can print the trace report in DOT format, so you can use any DOT rendering um, to actually display the graph. So uh, you have, we have seen the call graph, which I showed in the first slide, so that is generated using this dot option. And the trace report includes uh, the call hierarchy, uh, the time spent in each method, uh, the project or service uh, which the method is part of, and uh, some context to do some debugging. And also categorize the trace elements into different um, types like, such as WSGI, RPC, DB, or driver calls, uh, depending on what uh, type of call it is. So um, natural question could be why OS Profiler? Why can't we use SIPKIN or, um, uh, or say CProfile? So the short answer is the scope is totally different. So we don't want any tight coupling with a non-OpenStack solution. And uh, also at the same time, we should be able to enable or disable a tracing without restarting the service. And in some cases, we should be able to enable tracing for specific API requests. So we don't want to enable tracing for uh, all, all type of APIs. And as I mentioned earlier, we don't want all users to um, run tracing and put a lot of uh, stress on the system. And also, it should be easy to integrate with uh, OpenStack projects. And uh, there is no need to um, um, there is no need to include all methods in the trace because if we start including all methods in the trace, uh, the trace report will be too noisy and uh, it will be difficult to analyze that. So these were some of the goals, and uh, so we had to come up with a new project, a uh, new library for uh, men for OpenStack, that is OS Profiler. So what are the projects supported by OS Profiler? So, um, so you can see the complete list here. So some of them are under review, and um, most of the, uh, uh, the, the core projects, it's already merged, the, the integration, uh, it's already integrated, so we can uh, straight away start using uh, OS Profiler with those uh, commands. Okay, so let's move on to uh, some of the internals of OS Profiler. So these are the different modules in OS Profiler. Uh, so I'll start with the uh, Profiler module. So that, uh, that, that module is responsible for generating the trace, trace elements. For, so when, you, uh, when a method gets invoked, it uh, generates a trace element before it enters the method. And uh, uh, once it exits the method, it generates another trace element so that we can calculate the time difference. Uh, the time for execution of that method. So the profiler, once it generates a trace element, it needs to publish and store it somewhere. Uh, we, we store it in something called trace data store. 
Uh, so there are different types of trace data store we support. So it uses a notifier module to publish the trace to the trace data store. The notifier module, it uh, supports a plugin mechanism, um, so uh, which means that we can actually have different kinds of plugin uh, to support different types of trace data stores. Um, so the web module is the one which is responsible for validating the user request, whether it's a valid request to enable profiling. So it uh, basically checks whether the secret key mentioned by the user is correct. Um, but not in that way. I mean, uh, it uses something called a hash signature. So, so that's a, a purpose of the web module. So initializer, as the name indicates, it initializes OS profiler. It initializes the web module with the secret key specified in the config file. The admin specifies the secret key in the config file, and the initializer initializes the web module with that. And it also initializes the notifier. Um, uh, so basically, it tells the notifier, OK, this is my uh, trace data store connection parameters. So initialize the trace data store. So the notifier uses the appropriate driver to initialize, the, uh, to initialize an instance of a driver. So, um, so this is, uh, these are the main components in OS Profiler. So uh, the profiler generates a trace element when it enters and exits a method. So uh, what's the structure of the trace element? So the most important um, element, uh, the part of the trace element, is a base ID. So the base ID is a ID of the trace. So this is something. Uh, this is what is printed when you run the uh, the command with the profile option. So you, this is a ID representing the entire trace. The ID is the ID for that for that particular trace element, and parent ID is the ID. Of, uh, of, of the function, of the parent function in the call hierarchy, then uh, the project and the service uh, are pretty obvious. Uh, it, uh, the project can be Cinder Nova Extra, and service is Cinder Volume Nova Compute. And uh, the, the, the name is a type of that trace element. It's a WSGI or RPC or DB or driver. So when it, before uh, entering the method, we generate, uh, we suffix uh, start to the, the, the type, and when it exits, we, we, we put a suffix stop just to understand, um, uh, to calculate the time difference. Then the timestamp uh, to generate, uh, to, to find out the, the time spent in the method. And uh, info is a debugging info. So it, it, it varies with the type of the method. For WSJ, we will have a path, um, we have a query uh, method and scheme. And uh, for RPC and driver, we have a function name arguments and keyword arguments. For DB, we will have the statements and uh, the parameters. So uh, I mentioned we support different types of trace data store to store the trace element uh, so that we can generate the report at a later point. So um, since OS Profiler 1.3, we had a dependency on Silometer. So we publish uh, trace uh, data as events um, to the message bus, and uh, which is consumed by Silometer and persists in its uh, store. So uh, that, is a, uh, that is not a good dependency because every time the, someone wants to run, they need, uh, they need to uh, enable Silometer. And uh, so in 1.4, 1, 1 we introduced a driver framework for uh, trace data persistence. So we could, um, uh, we could, we could, uh, we could have, uh, say, log inside or MongoDB as a, as a store for persisting trace data. So right now, the, the current version OS profile is 1.9. It supports Silometer, Elasticsearch, log inside, MongoDB, and uh, uh, log inside, um, and uh, Redis. So, um, so if you're not happy with uh, uh, Silometer and the Oslo messaging, um, uh, which, which is a default trace store, so we can replace it with, say, Redis or MongoDB. So, um, so how, how is the trace generated? So the first step is uh, the initialization of OS Profiler. Um, so we initialize OS Profiler with a secret key and a connection string. So this is specified by the admin in the config file. Um, so the connection string is like, um, it, 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 the first, the scheme indicates what type of uh, backend it is. It's MongoDB or Redis, then the, um, the, the connection parameters appropriate for that backend. So this uh, is actually interpreted by the appropriate driver class. So first we initialize, the, uh, initialize OS Profiler with the, these config options. And uh, then if OS Profiler is initialized, we patch the manager and the driver classes. Um, so, uh, and once we patch it, then, um, then it's capable of generating the trace elements. So how does a client initiate a trace request? How does it tell uh, the server that, okay, I need to enable trace request? 
So the user specify the secret key. And uh, once uh, the secret key is specified, uh, at the client side, we initialize the profiler using the secret key. Once the profiler is initialized, we send two additional headers. So the header contains uh, a data, which is the base ID generated for that trace, and uh, a hash signature. So the hash signature is computed using this data and, uh, and, and, and the secret key. So, um, and, and we, we, pass, we, we send this data and the hash signature uh, as two additional headers if the profiler is initialized. So at the server side, how do we verify whether a trace request is valid or not? So we verify the hash signature. So we regenerate uh, the, tra the, the trace signature using the data sent from the client and the secret key configured in the server. And we compare the hash signatures, and if it matches, that means the user entered the correct key. So we initialize the profiler with the base ID. So, um, so once we patch the class, um, it's capable of generating the um, uh, trace element. So basically, it, it, it ap apply the decorator, uh, which is shown here, the profiler.trace to each method. And uh, uh, so whenever the method uh, execution comes, it uh, generates, before it enters, it, it generates a trace element and exits, it generates another trace element. For RPC calls, we, in, in the request context serialization before making the RPC call, we construct a, some, a trace info uh, dictionary and uh, with, the, with the, uh, the current ID uh, of the function and the base ID, which is the ID of the trace. And during deserialization, we check if this trace info is set in the context. If it is set, we initialize the profiler with the base ID and the parent ID. OK, so let's go through uh, a, a short demo. Uh, this is a record demo, not a live demo. So uh, we will walk through these steps, configuring our profiler and uh, running the various commands with the profiling enabled and, uh, and, and, and the trace report generation. OK, the, uh, the first step is to uh, configure OS profiler. So, so we go to the config file of uh, the project, which we want to enable OS profiler. So we need uh, uh, basically four options. We have four options. Enable must be set to true. Then uh, trace SQL alchemy, um, by default, is false. So if it's turned on, then uh, tracing will be enabled for DB um, queries as well. Um, uh, but it will generate a lot of noise. Um, and the uh, HMAC keys is a secret key. We can specify more than one key. And the connection string is a connection parameter for your trace uh, data store, um, trace data store. So in this case, I'm using log inside. We could use MongoDB or Redis here, or we can just um, uh, keep it empty and it defaults to Silometer and the uh, Oslo messaging. So we need similar uh, settings. Um, So we need similar settings in other, um, other projects as well. We have to use the same um, secret key and the connection string. Um, yeah, so. So, um, so I'm going to run a command. Uh, uh, to attach a, a, a Cinder volume to a Nova instance with the profiling enabled. So you can see uh, in the help, uh, the, the profile uh, option is clearly documented. My secret key is full, so I, I run the Nova command with the, the, uh, with the profile option and give the key as full. Okay, so uh, it, it prints a command um, to generate the, 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 the trace report. 
So you can, you can see that uh, the, the last part, the EUID is a base ID of the trace. So the command um, is completed, so we can we can generate the trace trace report. So uh, by default, it, it assumes that uh, a Celometer is your trace store, so it tried to connect to Celometer, um, and Celometer client was not installed in my system, so that's why it uh, um, it gives an error. But actually, my trace uh, the trace store is log inside, so. How do I specify to the uh, how do you specify OS profile or tracer? Because this is running in the client side, not on the server side. Uh, the, the, we normally run it in two machines. So the config file we, we we saw earlier that is server side configuration. So we need to tell OS profiler okay where to connect to get the uh, trace information. So we have to specify the connection string um, either to the tracer command or we can set an uh, environment variable. So. So we can um, see the connection string um, help here. So um, we can either uh, give it um, along with the command or we can uh, set the environment variable OS profiler connection string. So I'm going to set the um, environment variable here. So now it generates a trace report, but it's printed to the console. So let's redirect that to a file. So now we can go and open uh, that uh, HTML file. So uh, this is a default trace report generated by OS Profiler. So we can we can see uh, we can um, collapse it, expand it, uh, the various uh, various nodes. Uh, these are different methods, so we can um, we can see the total time um, we can see the total time spent on the top uh, at the level zero, and we can see the type of the um, trace element, the project service, and the host uh, generated that uh, trace trace element. If it's running in different hosts, so that will be helpful where it was generated. And we can click uh, the detail, so that is act that's a debugging context. So, uh, so in this case, um, it's a driver method, so it has the function name, uh, arguments, and the keyword arguments. So that will be helpful for debugging. Okay, so um, let's see uh, one other capability in OS Profiler. So I'm going to create a Cinder volume uh, using a volume type. So the volume type um, has a, it, it has a storage policy associated with that. Uh, so I'm going to use a store, the volume type gold. So it has a storage policy named bar, and this is an invalid storage policy. So obviously, when you create the volume, it will error out. Um, so let's see whether we can get that error information when we run the trace. So I'm going to run uh, the Cinder create command with profiling enabled. So um, the, the volume we just created, that is an error state because uh, the extra spec has an invalid value. So this is a trace report generated. And uh, and if you look uh, in that method, uh, the trace element corresponding to that method, we can, we can see the exception information as well. So 
So, uh, so we support um, uh, some other formats for trace report. So let's go to the, uh, let's go and see the dot format. So, uh, so we, we support J JSON. So if you want uh, to inspect the trace report in JSON, we can use that option. So I'm going to uh, show this dot option. So when you use the dot option, it, it generates uh, the trace report in dot format. And uh, if needed, we can actually, so uh, we need a rendering a renderer to actually uh, create a call graph using the dot uh, output. So there's an option to render it uh, um, in OIS profiler itself. So it generates um, a PDF uh, file uh, showing the graph. But we need to install GraphWiz package for that. So the volume uh, is now created, so we can run the trace show command, um, giving the dot option to generate the output in graph format. So we have to use, uh, instead of HTML, we have to use dot as the output format, and uh, we have to also mention render dot option and give a file name to render the output to. So we can, we can see that uh, uh, the dot format here, and we, we can use any uh, third party dot, dot format rendering to display this graph. So this, um, uh, since we use the render dot option, um, OS profiler rendered that into a file called trace. So we can open that and, um, and see the output. So this is a simple trace, so uh, we cannot put a lot of information here because uh, it'd be difficult to display that, unlike the waterfall style graph model uh, in the HTML format. But it's, it's useful for smaller, smaller graphs. Okay, so by that, uh, um, demo is over. So, uh, so these are the folks, they are, they are core uh, reviewers in OIS Profiler, so they helped me prepare this presentation. So thanks to them. And uh, thank you everyone for attending the talk. Thank you. Any questions? I'm just wondering if uh, you know if there's how much overhead when you have a trace on. Is that like right. in a production cloud? Is that going to be dangerous? Yeah. So, so uh, I was expecting that question. So, so uh, while uh, uh, implementing the driver for log inside, I did some study, but we haven't published it, and it's not a formal study. So I did it using my laptop. So we cannot say that okay whether the results are valid for a production system. When I did that, uh, uh, so I did three tests. One was no profiling, no patching, and one with the default option, that is the messaging and the silometer, and then one with uh, the log inside, which I'm using. So definitely there is an overhead, but it's in the order of milliseconds. I find I was running a um, few commands like cinder list and cinder create. I was running in a batch and then uh, trying to take the average, not just running one test. So, and compared to uh, comparing log inside and uh, silometer, I find that the uh, uh, pushing the trace elements, publishing the trace element was much faster um, with the uh, log inside, but the report generation was comparatively slower compared to um, kilometers. So, yeah, so this is something uh, we have discussed, so we are planning to do that, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have two questions. Is there a command that shows you a list of the profiles that have been captured and the commands that generated them, and is there a way to aggregate uh, the results from running the same command a few times? Um, okay, so uh, you just want to know what all traces have been generated in the past? 
Yeah, if I don't copy the yep, yeah, got trace it, got ID. It. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately it is not there, but our driver framework, um, uh, um, so we, we have added the API to extend it, so that is something which we can do it. So I'll take a note of it, yeah. That would be useful, yeah. Thanks for the interesting talk. I have two questions. First is, how does this support me means the hooks are already added in the NOAA or Cinder or all this component? And how many hooks are added, do you know? Okay, so you basically want to know how many uh, hooks were added in NOAA, Cinder, et cetera? Yeah, and are they already exist in the latest release? Oh, okay, so I don't have the complete uh, uh, idea of how many places. At least I can uh, tell from Cinder because I contribute to Cinder. Um, so in Cinder, we, we actually uh, added hooks to all the public methods in the manager classes. That's a scheduler manager, Cinder volume manager, and all the WSGI APIs. And uh, wherever, depending on your driver, all the public methods in the driver will also be patched. So um, Nova, similar things, but uh, I don't have the exact uh, number. So you add the hooks in the WSGI and RPC in each service? Instead of yes, the, the, yes, okay. yes, that's right. The second question is, if you use Rally or some, your Horizon to do a batch of operations, mm -hmm. will the trace be just one or each operation will have one trace? Means how to differentiate so, the traces uh, of operations. You just want to trigger from Rally, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this, uh, so uh, the Rally integration is not yet completed, so it's actually, uh, the spec is merged. So uh, to do the integration with Rally, so every time before you invoke an API, you should initialize the profiler in the current thread. So whenever you initialize, a new um, new trace ID will be created. So it's, a, it's up to the client. If Rally is initializing it once, all the APIs it invokes in that thread will be a single trace. So it, it initializes the profiler run API 1, so API 2. All these will be part of the same trace. But after completing API 1, it reinitializes the profiler. We will have a different uh, trace. So basically, each trace is corresponding to one operation instead of one open stack operation. So use uh, our operation vs open stack operation. Um, so each trace corresponds to an open stack operation because it, it uh, so I, I don't understand what you mean by so open stack. if you create one, use Rally to create 100 VMs, mm -hmm. how many traces will generate? Um, so you may be using the Nova boot command, right, repeatedly? Mm, yeah. In a for loop or something. Okay. So uh, you initialize the profiler, then in a for loop you try to create uh, 100 VMs. Mm -hmm. So all these operations will be part of the same trace. Okay. But at the end of creating a particular VM, we reinitialize the profiler, we will have different, different traces. Okay, I see. Yeah. Thank you. And you can query the profiler module to get the trace, uh, the current trace ID, if you are, if you are doing this programmatically. Okay. Um, so. <clears throat> uh, so, I mean, you, you mentioned there that you've got a shared secret effectively to, to authorize whether the profile is put in, you know, turned on. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you're doing to expand upon that? Because obviously you can see how in uh, a production cloud or a production intent cloud, then being able to hand out one-time keys to users with problems might be a useful thing. Yeah, so uh, this is something um, the core team has discussed in the past. So definitely that is there in the, 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 uh, the goal list, yeah. So that is something we're planning to address, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, two questions. Uh, uh, is recording profile uh, a synchronous or asynchronous? Uh, recording? Uh, yeah. Sorry, a notify profile? Okay, notif oh, uh, it's synchronous actually. Synchronous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, the, we can do some optimizations there, like caching the the profile elements and sending it in a batch. Yeah. So those optimizations are not done. It's synchronous. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, if cell meta is crash, uh, the API process is uh, stop. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the question? Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, as a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Should I set key as the same value between component? Yeah, no you, should, in that? You, should, you should set the same value. Otherwise, uh -huh. because um, one service will call the other service, right? So it, uh, the, the client will send the secret key. So, um, and uh, it should use the same key, yeah. Okay, I see, thank yeah. you. 
one question over here. Is this one on? Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess a two-part question. First one is, would you recommend or recommend against using this as a distributed tracing uh, tool outside of OpenStack? And kind of related to that, um, uh, you mentioned you didn't want to tightly couple distributed tracing yeah. to some other tool. Yeah. Um, were there other distributed tracing tools that you looked at? Um, yeah, so, uh, so currently there is a proposal, a blueprint proposed to make uh, the trace element information we generate compatible with open tracing API. So this open tracing API, once we generate our trace elements in that format, we could use we could use a lot of other visualization tools. So that is a plan rather than um, putting OS profiler in other projects because um, our use cases may not match. Um, I mean, it, it may not be generic one, right? So, so so the, the plan is to make uh, the the trace element uh, compatible with open tracing and then uh, integrate with a lot of other tooling which supports open tracing. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So would you recommend this to, I mean, have, do you know of anyone that have used this, you know, in the production? Yeah, so uh, I know um, some of our customers um, used it, yeah, so diagnose the performance issues. And uh, we, as developers, we, we use it whenever we get some performance issues, yeah. So, I see, but yeah. not on the regular basis. Really. Not on the it regular basis, when you have performance issues, yeah. I see, got yeah. it, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think the question that got missed over here before was they were asking since the sending the trace data is synchronous, yeah. if, if you're sending it to Celometer and Celometer yeah. is crashed, does yeah. that stop your, um, like your sender proxy process? Uh, basically? Yeah, so let me, wow. let me see. Uh, I think uh, it depends on the driver implementation, how the driver catches the exception. So it's in, and if it ignores that, then it will continue otherwise. And if the driver doesn't, it propagates that exception back, then um, your OpenStack request itself will fail. Yeah. So we need to, we need to fix that, yeah. That's right. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Thank you for attending. <laughs>